Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, if your dog could talk, what's the first thing it would say? <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> that or hey, did you know poop tastes good, especially when it's <laughs> cold and frozen? My dog eats poop all the time in the winter, and I don't know why. The turd sickles. That's what they are. It's the most yeah. disgusting thing to see because she goes out there. You see her digging in the snow. She's like, oh, yep. there's one here. And she and gets it and she's just like, nip, 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 yep. licks on it. And then she just grabs it. And we're like, hey, she has it in her mouth. It looks like there's a stogie hanging out of her ah. mouth and you know it's poop. I'm like, get in here. And she's like, starts going, hang, 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 hang. like chewing on it really fast. I'm like, yeah. get in here. And she's like, hang, hang, hang. and then she finishes and she's like, okay, I'm inside. I, I listened. I I'll like, come lick you now. Because it's hard to clean up poop in the wintertime, you know, because yeah. it gets snowed on and everything like that. <laughs> well, it's also it's those it's the horrible sound of especially if you're standing next to them and you just hear that like soft crunch. And you're like, oh, oh. oh, I know what that and is. And she just seeks it out in the wintertime. Summertime, she doesn't mess with it a whole lot. That's interesting. She's, it is what it is. But man, wintertime, she's just eating her own shit, man. It is <laughs> Christmas time and it's like for four months, man. It's Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving all wrapped up into four months. <laughs> what would your dogs? What would your dogs say, Justin? I, they could just look at me and go, "You know, we can smell everything." <laughs> please, please, we can smell everything. <laughs> please stop. Boy, that would be a fun conversation to be like, "What's it like for you to smell?" Like, yeah. do you just like you know? What's it like for you to literally be able to tell what I'm feeling? Based on the like, based on smell, it's amazing right. what dogs can fucking pick up. It's <laughs> like, absolutely bonkers. The second you open the fridge, you're like, "What are you making?" You hear him yelling from huh? the room. What are you doing? <laughs> Wait, what's, what's going not, on? No, I'm just getting a piece of cheese for myself. Cheese? No, yeah, yeah. Cheese tax. The cheese tax. <laughs> <laughs> that is too, because every time I open the fridge, man, Benny is right there. And then if, See, if look, Benny look. moves quickly into the kitchen, Abby's right in tow. She's like, what's See, happening? When I open the freezer, Loki comes around like, can I have some ice? Right, she yeah. loves to have ice. She's well, like, no, she, ice. she's just like, this is poopless poopsicles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's a winter dog. What can I say? She likes the, the winter time. Yeah. Um, I truly yeah. think my dog would, uh, I, I think they both would be like, okay, thank God we can finally communicate. Do you understand how many threats are outside? <laughs> Do you understand the danger? You, we protect, we are nonstop on guard in this place. And I'd be like, yeah, I fucking hear you. You were up here Man. a couple weekends ago. You know how much they bark. Man, that would be really funny to be They're like, oh, my God, they're back. And you're right. like, who's back? It's like the, this fucking guy and his fucking dog. Oh, man, they're walking. Oh, you let me out. I'll fucking. I don't need to let you out. Why not? Because we're safe. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. They're walking on our land and I will not stand for it. Dad. They're gone. <laughs> They're gone. They're gone. Right. <laughs> okay. Job's done. Going, where'd they go? Job's done. You know. Jobs. Ah, all right. And then <laughs> that deep licking like, sound where oh, they're just like, yeah, I got to clean myself now. Because uh, I'd be like, does that taste good? Right. What do we, what is this exactly? Because I'm also doing? like, hey, listen, I understand you have, you don't have, you have one way to clean yourself. I get that. But yeah. like, man, you sound like you're, I think, like you're I think I described this to you. Like Loki, when she does it, there's like, there's like a, a soft moan that comes out of her. And You've I don't know if it's, about that, I don't know if it's just because like the way that she's positioned, like she's doing like a hard crunch for a long time. So right. maybe she's just like, Ugh. yeah, but it sounds like she's like licking. And then it's just like, no, no, no. It sounds like there's like <laughs> some delectable nuggets in there that she's just like getting some hints and some tones of different things. And she's just like processing it. I'm like, does, does Loki ever do? But I I saw Abby do this first, and I was like, that's weird. I've never like she and she started doing this. We've had her for nine years now. She probably started doing this four years ago. Like I was so the, for the first few years, I'm like, I never saw you do this. And all of a sudden, and then I saw Benny do it, and I was like, wait a second, is this? A, so I looked it up, and it's apparently it is a thing that dogs will do. But she'll get a a, a scent or a 
tiny little taste of something, and then she'll go. Almost like, <laughs> like she's, she's like sipping wine. Hmm. What is the pa- on my palate? I'm tasting, but she'll do the, and it's the funniest sound they make because it's like the suctiony, but it is like aerating wine, like how you would how you would taste it, and it's from what I have read online, it it is a dog kind of trying to map a new scent or taste, mm-hmm. like it's them it's them getting. It is the I would the only way I can describe what I've read is like it's the equivalent of of us doing a bougie wine tasting and it's them because cats do that too like if you see the, the cats will do what's called like it's kind of like a stinky face like they'll okay. have something where they'll be like ah, and they'll just ah. hold you're like it? you're like is that smelling bad what they're what they're doing is they're processing that smell oh they're interesting like, they're like what is that either it's something they you know they're like I haven't sensed this since yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like Obi Wan. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, I remember this. Han Solo's here, you know. Like, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's the it's the way it weirded me out at first, but I'm just like, oh, I'll be there. Does Loki has Loki never done that? I've never seen her do that. I will laugh my ass off if she's now that we've brought it up. If she starts doing it, well, you did talk about how Benny, you know, voided his uh, anal glands, and then on the way home from your place, Loki did it immediately as soon as we got in the car. Has Loki ever like, done that before? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. good. But, but it was just ironic that it was right then. Yeah, because yeah. she immediately starts looking up the seat, like you know. Oh, and, got it. Don't worry. Nally and I are sitting in there because Jill's going in to get some food at a fast yep. food place for us, and we're both like, oh. And Nally just goes. Oh, dad, can we go somewhere else? I go, why? She goes, I don't want to sit here. I have to eat next to this. And I'm like, that's a valid point, but fucking suck it up. We're not getting out of this car. It's, ah. This is, yeah, <laughs> we are in an air conditioning and mom's coming right back. We need to just push through this. We need to power We just through. won't recycle the air. Okay. Right. We'll just, you know, we'll push the we'll button and let air. fresh yeah. air come in here. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, it, that's, that's really, that's another one, man, that, uh. Owning a dog is, is tough with that, man. When they don't, when their when their glands are not expressed naturally, and they yeah. start leaking out, boo! That is a scent. That's and that smell is so no knowing. It's it's pungent. It's sour. It it yeah. stings the nostrils. It's so funny because I thought that smell was coming from like Natalie's pants or something like that. Like, like she when, had an accident or something. I don't know. Well, she would been somewhere. Maybe it was from riding horses. Okay. And I was like Natty. I was like. Hey, can you go like change your pants? Like I literally told her that, like, can you change your pants? I go, I think your pants smell. I felt bad because I, but I had no idea because where I was sitting, it was on the cushion just like behind her, but like in front of me. And I was like, right. girl, you got to come on. This is, a this nice was in the car justice. or this is in your, in your house. Oh, when Benny, when Benny, when yeah. it happened with Benny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, girl, you can't do this t- to his couch. Get it. Like, go change your pants. Like I thought her, her pants were just like horse or something like that. I was like, don't, don't sit there and get that on the couch. Right. And then all of a sudden I was like, I might be this cushion. I'm like, were you sitting on this cushion? And then you came in, you're like, what is that? I'm like, I don't know. And you're like, and my, my favorite thing yeah. was watching Justin oh, sniff the couch. I turned into a dog. I was because, yeah. dogs look way cooler than humans. Because oh, obviously they have the long style. So Justin, this is what it looked like to me. He was just going. If you're For just listening, you, Justin was just like constantly yeah. like literally touching his nose to different points around the couch and just, <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And you were moving so fast. I was just yeah. like, this is highly comical to me to watch it, you just like, I got to pinpoint where this is, you know? This is, it's funny because that's normal behavior that I don't witness myself doing, but if like right. I, I have to pinpoint it so that I can get the, uh, uh, what is it? The, the resolve out and, mm-hmm. and resolve oh, right. the situation, you know? Exactly. So I yeah. got to figure out where it's coming from. Cause sometimes it's just like you walk in the room and you're like, fuck somewhere in this room, a gland has been expressed and not in a good way. <laughs> I'm the and anal so you gland pin, detector. You, it. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> you come in with a fedora, smoke a cigarette. You're like, <laughs> Oh my God. It's, it's happened again. It's happened again. Put the cigarette out, pull out some flones, just shake it up and go. <laughs> you get like you get out like some spray paint. You're like, <laughs> happened right here. Happened this is right where it here. happened. Scene of the crime. <laughs> Bring in the crew. He turns the like. You look at me. You're like, where were you 15 minutes ago, fucker? You know, like <laughs> start just aggressively interrogating people. Have you changed your pants? What uh, I noticed you've got a fresh pair of pants on. Uh, right. Got something you want to tell me? You uh, <laughs> you have uh, you have anything you want to express? <laughs> nice. 
Those of you just listening, Justin just randomly pulled out a pipe. It was awesome. <laughs> Well, I'll never forget. <laughs> Prop <laughs> comedy. Perfect for podcasts. Perfect for podcasting. When I uh, I visited uh, my parents a few years back, um, and I remember like staying in the room that they normally set up for us, and it just reeked of cat piss. Oh, just God. reeked of cat piss. And this worst. is this is this is probably should have been like a major red flag to me that something was wrong with my yeah. parents. But I was just like, it smelled like piss. And I was like, this is awful. And I remember going downstairs. It's, it's like the next morning, be like, Hey, I think uh, I think the cat's peeing in that room. My <laughs> mom just being like, "No," I'm like, it's flat out denying I it. I go, "I'm I'm pretty sure that." She goes, "No," and I I had the pillow with me. I'm like, "I want you to smell this corner of this pillow that I laid on last night." So you had you were you identified you did the slew thing. Good, I I'm did. Proud of you. That's I good. did. Yeah. And, and if you would have, I would have looked exactly like you while I was trying to figure out where it was. <laughs> just and I the literally whole room. Yeah, shoved the corner in her mouth in her face. And I'm like, "You smell this," and she smelled it, and I just saw the look on her face of like, "Fuck." He's did right. she try to? Did she try to pull back? Did she sniff it? And you could just she see, sniffed like, and immediately lone, I could see it on her face. I'm the like, lone yeah, tear. But yeah, she was trying to hold what? it, and she goes, "I don't smell anything." I was like, "Yeah, it's all over the fucking room," and I don't know why because no one stays in that room. Why are right. the cats going in there? What are you keep doing? The door closed. Just keep the door closed. That's like, it. why are they in there? Just pissing. Can't wait till yeah, uh, I have to gross. fucking take over that house. Whenever oh, they dude. do whatever they do, whether they're dead or otherwise, I have to go in there and just, it's going to be riddled with cat piss. I'm like, great. This ought to be real fun to fucking sell. It's you should be a just, real treat. You should just take the L and burn the house down. Yeah. No, probably not. In this in this economy? Are you right? kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you could. That's true. You could still get $800,000 for it. <laughs> right. Re- hey, man. Covered in cat piss. Soaked in cat piss. In, hey, man. Someone will take it and then they'll just flip it. <laughs> in tiny town, Missouri. And uh, right? yeah. Yeah, this? You, oh like, no, yeah. we went for 1.2. <laughs> Cat piss and all, you know. Cat piss and all, yeah. They said uh, it gave it character. Yeah, character. Well, let us know in the comments what you think your dog or cat or animal, your pet in general, would say to you if yeah. they could suddenly talk. What's the first thing you think they would say to you? We'd love to hear about it. And while you're there, leaving comments over at youtube.com slash mindgap podcast, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh yeah. But it would mean the world to us. And and share it around. Share it around. Be like, hey, what do you think you'd say to your pet? And right here on this podcast, right here, right down there. And then check the links uh, in the description for links to our Discord, for links to our Patreon, links to our merch. And uh, yeah, you know, just be cool. Follow us on our social medias at MindGap Podcast and just be, uh, just be a cool cat. Cool cat. And all that good shit. Uh, so, Justin. Mm-hmm. I literally tonight just finished rewatching all of Daredevil. <clears throat> okay. I'm and <clears throat> just because Are you talking I about had... the Ben Affleck movie or? No. Yeah. It took okay. me fucking two I'm weeks just saying, to finish that. Yeah. The, the I'm, I micro Originally on Netflix, Marvel Daredevil series starring gotcha. Charlie Cox. Um, uh, and also after season two, I was like, I just gotta, I just gotta see. Just got to see. And I watched, rewatched The Defenders. Oh, boy. I was going to say, uh, I know where this is going. Listen, Daredevil, uh-huh. fucking great show. Defenders sure. is a stinker. Boy, is that a stinker of a show. And boy, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm going in. I haven't seen this in God knows how many years. I'm like, I'm uh-huh. going in fresh. I'm like, this is really tough, man. This is a tough, especially coming off season two of Daredevil where there's a yeah. fucking Punisher and everything like that. Oh, that's right. They introduced Punisher. That's right. You're like, oh, this is so good. And then and there's fucking starts off with Danny Rand. I was going to say, Fist. was the whole was the whole show brought down? Because it's been years since I've seen it, too. I can't remember. Was the whole show brought down solely by Danny Rand? Listen, Iron Fist is a cool character. That was a terrible portrayal of him. Like, no argument. Just, yeah, no one's arguing that. <laughs> it was just awful. And it was so annoying because he was such a petulant child. And that's probably what they were going for. For that, but he was so obnoxious. Yeah. And and knowing that, it's just tactically stupid for mm-hmm. someone who's like, I'm the immortal Iron Fist. Right. And I am the defender of Kun Lun. And I shall defeat the hand. I'm like, you are a terrible tactician in everything that you do. Right. Like everything that you do, everything that you say, you're hot headed in all the most annoying ways. I'm like, why would I root for you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> As Anything. You're just right. so obnoxious. Very few redeeming qualities about you. There's also a lot of tropes. 
unfortunately in it like action tropes like uh one of the main bad guys of the hand gets thrown over a ledge and they're like oh and they go to look and he's not there at the bottom it's like oh of course of course of course not. he's yep. magical <laughs> he's not magical he just has the ability to resurrect like yeah. they, with using stuff the substances anyway i digress um daredevil fucking fantastic i'm so glad that i i've been meaning for a little while to go back and rewatch it fucking holds up man it's great do you, have you great. heard anything about the uh is it i don't know if it's a uh continuation or reimagining a reboot whatever it is of the one that they're doing that that actual marvel is doing like daredevil is it gonna reborn. follow um i didn't heard. know if it was gonna be basically a season three or not i don't know i think it's um I, don't, I mean, they've got. Is it really going to have the same people in it? I mean, based on based on what I'm seeing for the cast, like you've got. I mean, fuck, they have they have John Bernthal listed as Frank Castle. Dude, I'll take any any uh, Punisher I can get. John Bernthal okay. is an amazing Punisher. I gotta I gotta see. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a continuation as some. Because this is the premise is Mur- Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk try to put their rivalry and darker alter egos aside to help the people of New York only for their past to ke- catch up with them. So, right. yeah, I mean, they've got they've got people coming back, man. They, a lot of the people from the cast are coming back. Um, All right, I'll take it. Uh, it apparently, um, I don't know. But apparently, it's, it's coming out maybe in 2025. So... Anyway, it says cost confirmed in May 2024 that nine episodes have been filmed. So right. hopefully, fingers fingers crossed, man. It's just such a good show. But I bring that up because yeah, sorry, in, in season three of Daredevil, uh, there's a moment where one of the agents um, in the show is dealing with a problem because like, he's in a very dangerous role. He's been through some dangerous shit. And his wife and his son are very scared for him being in this situation. And he's confiding in his superior to be like, I don't know, I don't know what to tell him. And his boss is like, you know, lie to him. He's like, ah, I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. And she told a story in there about how her dad was a long haul truck driver, and she used to get really scared about him hauling dangerous chemicals because that's what he what he hauled, and she wouldn't want him to go on trips. She would like get in his way, try to prevent him from, from doing the, you know, the trucking and stuff like that. And then he's like, he brought her around to the back of the truck. And if you've ever seen trucks, they have like a diamond on the back of them that dictates like numbers and combinations that basically lets you know how hazardous the materials are. And he's like, look, this is a number four. He's like, that's the lowest. This is the, the, the safest materials that I could possibly be hauling. She saw that and she was like, oh my gosh. Okay, cool. And she was fine with it. <laughs> but in reality, that was the most dangerous <laughs> Like that's the highest thing right. that they highest, could do. Highest you can get there. That's the highest you can get. And she just, you know, and she she tells him, she says, the lies that keep us safe are the ones worth telling. And I was just sitting there thinking, I'm like, ah, that's cool in that show. But I'm like, in real life, is that also true? Is that something we should do? You're a liar, Justin. How do you feel? <laughs> that just felt so mean to say, hey, you're a liar. No. No, I um, wore the badge with honor. <laughs> Um, because, Never you know, trust you, you, anything I say. That's you, a I mean, statement for everyone listening. <laughs> there's, you know, because there's times where you're like, you know, there there are, you know, quote unquote, good lies. Mm. You know, Santa Claus. Sure. You know, that's, that's a Wait, lie. what about him? Yeah, right. What about him? The, you know, all that sort of stuff, the tooth fairy and everything, you know, like either there's these fantasies. We are lying to our children about sure, them. They're yeah. not real. You pulled Beth um, and I into that lie, by the way. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, because <laughs> one of Natalie's friends... <laughs> uh, went to was, visit their their dad, yeah. and their dad was like, "Yeah, we don't believe in the f- tooth fairy here, so, uh, so she they're not come. coming." Yeah, and this was their dad who mm-hmm. was like, "No." And dad <laughs> was like, "This is why he only gets custody on the weekends, <laughs> right? This is why he, he sees them like once a year, you know? once a like, year, right? Exactly, yeah." So, so her friend told her that you know the tooth fairy doesn't come to places that don't believe in the tooth fairy. So that's why she asked you guys, "Do you believe in the tooth fairy?" Because she has the weirdest tooth. question, and we're like, "You're like." Yes. I guess what if you're like, no. She's right. like, no. <laughs> and I can't lose my tooth there, you know? Yeah. Like, and I couldn't have prepped you for that because I didn't know that was a question that was going to be asked. Right? So, you know. Such a, such a, I was like, 
All right, here we go. We're gonna. This is where yes ending comes in very handy. You're like, fuck yeah, I do. Yeah, absolutely. You mean Beth Diane? Not- Diane and I are tight, you know? Yeah. Oh, shit. She's a queen around here. And absolutely. Gary Slay. the Dairy Fairy, he and I are like in, man. He leaves me cheese all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Gary the Dairy Fairy is, uh, is <laughs> it's actually the demon that comes when you're lactose intolerant. <laughs> He's like, you want some? <laughs> Guess what? Bubble, Here's bubble, some brie, toil, and, you know? toil and trouble. <laughs> I made you a delicious milkshake. Gary, you know I can't have that. He's like, I know, but it's so delicious. And you're like, oh, it does look good. He's like, I you promise drink it's it up. delicious. <laughs> drink it up. It won't drink kill you. your milkshake. You'll just have awful diarrhea. <laughs> but so, it'll be worth it, I promise. <laughs> but yes, we do tell we do tell children. We lie to children constantly. Constantly yeah. lying to children. But- Again, good faith lies. Yes. So, you know, it it got me thinking about, you know, just real life in general. And when is it, you know, when is it a good time to lie? Like, do you, do you, you know, do you lie (laughs) to say, to keep others safe in order to keep us safe and things like that? And if, if, if you were to find out that someone, a good friend or, you know, your wife had lied to you, but it was for a good reason to keep you safe. I mean, obviously, some context and some specifics are probably pretty important in these situations, you know. Yeah, I would say that it's a tough one to do a blanket statement on this one specifically, mm-hmm. because I do think that like I, the, the it's a great line. Like it's mm-hmm. a very important for dialogue in a in a film or in a, in yeah. a, a piece of, of cinema or TV or whatever. Like the lies that keep us safe are the ones worth telling. Fantastic line uh, hits hard and gets the point across in that scene. I, I to your point, though, I don't know that it is a. Uh, I don't know that that's something can be like, I live my life by this. I, I live and die by this statement. Uh, well, let's say, I don't know. There's let's, a lot let's, of. Let's, let's put it in context. Let's make up a situation. Let's say that you do, um, you know, your job is very dangerous, Justin. You know, you're. Accurate. You, you do a Ac- lot of accurate. stuff. Accurate, yeah. You're editing. I'm you're creating content. At risk, constantly at risk of being carpal tunnel. Here's the thing. You are reviewing and editing content that has. Uh, National security consequences. Like you have access to information okay. that could put you and your and your wife at risk because you are accessing that information on the regular. And, you know, someone calls your house or calls your wife's phone one night with a voice modulator. It's like, I know what's going on. I know you have access to information. Give us, give us, uh, you better hand him over or we're going to get you. And she's like all freaked out. She's like, what's this about? You know, this guy called, said that you have access to stuff. You're like, baby, that's not me. What are you talking about? I don't know what you do. I do podcasts with Doug. Like, what do you want from me? You know, like in order to put her mind at ease. You sure wasn't a spam those robocallers? (laughs) Sure wasn't. I got a text saying that, you know, I'm late for a a design show, like for a fashion show. What's up with that? (laughs) Anyone else got those texts? (laughs) Because Justin's got him twice. I got him, I got him in droves. <laughs> yeah, I got. I love talking with him. Um, but in a situation like that, if yeah. you were to be like, okay, this is what I really do. Like, I do have access to that. And she's like, oh, my God, you're putting me and, and us at risk. But you're like, this job is super important. And if I don't do this, people die. You know? Man, I want to see this movie. This yeah, is a like good movie. movie. I love this cool. setup. The film editor. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to know what films I'm editing that that have such dire national security risk. What the P possibly? tapes, the P tapes, exactly. Yeah, P, the, the P tapes. I'm responsible for doctoring security footage. Uh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, anytime that our special forces get caught on camera, I have to go in and doctor the footage to remove them, digitally remove exactly. them. It's Instead gotten a lot guns, easier. They have walkie talkies. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It's just they just have giant baguettes. <laughs> Well, he hit that guy pretty hard with the baguette. Right? His Why head are those came Navy off? SEALs all running around with just loaves of bread? I don't get this. <laughs> um, so would it be would it be uh, good to lie? Like, would it? You're asking, well, like in that scenario, would mm-hmm. the lie be acceptable? Yeah, would the lie be acceptable to keep her safe, to keep her calm, to let her, you know, to keep her? Well, out, I think you ha- like. Did. I would say more than it being uh, acceptable or not, I think it's it's a necessity, right? Like if you if you're mm-hmm. you know in the clandestine arts, if you will, uh, working mm-hmm. for the government, I think you gotta lie, right? Like that's part yeah. of the job. So yeah. is it right or not? I don't know, but that's what you signed up for when you yeah when you right. get the job. There you're taking the paycheck every week, right? That's right. I'm just saying. My buddy who joined uh, the CIA, 
uh, right. back in the day. Like he's like, Hey man, um, you can't tell anyone that I do this. <laughs> it's like, I knew his secret identity. He's right. Like, and you're just like, anyone. I feel like immediately this is a breach. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he's like, <laughs> you, you can't tell me anyone because he also put me as a reference for him to get in there. And I got contacted by government agents. <laughs> oh, cool. That's called cool. me. Yeah. And we're like, Hey, uh, we're gonna, we need to talk to you about Jeff. Uh, and I was like, Oh, okay. And he's like, by the way, this is going to be happening. So I, was, I remember they called once and I like was asleep. I was like sleeping in that day. And they're like, Hey, is this Doug? I'm like, Oh yeah. Hey, what's up? <laughs> like, yeah, I'd love to meet you. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, uh, I was like, you got a 309 area code. I'd love to love to meet up with you today. I'm like, oh, no, I'm actually in uh, I'm actually in Chicago. He's like, oh, all right, let me tell my driver to pull over. We'll just do this over the phone. And I was like, what? <laughs> so they were on their way to see you. Yeah. That's yeah. that's they want legit wild. They were in the area because like there's, you know, you know, the Quad Cities. Yeah, there's, there's Arsenal. Like yeah. That. Yeah, yeah. So like there's there's government installations there. But they were like, you know, hey, yeah, we uh, I'd love to meet up with you. You have a 309 area code. So we'd love to. Let me tell my driver to pull over. Let me tell my driver to pull over, and I'm just going to ask you a few questions. I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> oh, you're in Chicago. So, Give us two hours to the helipad. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Let me, uh, Kevin, Kevin, uh, my buddy Kevin, uh, he should be at your door right now. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, so like, you know, I got yeah. vetted for those sorts of things and, and whatnot. And literally on the website for the CIA, it's like, you may want to, you may be excited about this opportunity. Please do not disclose what you're doing with friends and family because it's, it's a problem. It's basically. A, yeah. Like, don't yeah, do it's that. A national, yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you think, not to deviate from the question too much, mm-hmm. but do you think that in that instance, if you come across something, let's say you're a data analyst and you come across something that you're like, fuck, this is some shit's going to like, it's about to go down. Mm-hmm. And you like, is it, is it like you might alert the, your, your, whoever your, uh, your superiors, but then is it wrong for you to go and grab your family and be like, we got to get the fuck out of Dodge because I know this is coming. Is that like the equivalent of like insider trading, if you will? It is. And Justin, that's how, uh, that's how the apocalypse happens. I don't know if you've uh, seen or read the stand, but that's precisely what happens? No, that's the catalyst for the giant plague that spreads around the world. Well, that, shit! Look that. at me! Look at me yeah, cracking right? book codes. Because this guy's on the secret base, and fucking contagion gets out, and this guy grabs his family and blows through quarantine and tries to get away, and he inadvertently infects some people, and it spreads. The super oh, contagion no. spreads across the world. Everyone dies except for a handful of people who are just that naturally immune to it. You know? Did he live? No. He died. That, that he and his family fun. died horribly. <laughs> See, not worth it. Not so worth it. the answer is, it's like insider trading, I think, to some degree. Yeah. But also, like, what are you going to do <laughs> if you think you're like, we're just, you're just going to sit there with that knowledge and be like, <laughs> what are you, Dad? What are you making for dinner tonight? Ah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> none of this matters. Dinner doesn't matter. <laughs> none of this we matters. We got to get out matters. of here. You know? Yeah. Well, you could argue that if the, if that he fucking kept us cool, that his family might still be alive, right? I mean, that, no, in that one, no, everyone who was on that base was going to die. Like, but but because oh, they regardless they stayed of con- hip, okay, they should have stayed contained because then the virus wouldn't have spread. But, the greater good, right? Exactly. So but he didn't he take the like, utilitarian approach to it, right? He's like, yeah. he's like, he didn't think he was infected yet, so he's like, we got to get out of here before we do. But he didn't realize that he already was. Sounds like and a then, COVID denier. Goddamn right. He wasn't wearing his face mask. Um, <laughs> you know, but there, there's also certain times like, you know, well, what is it? You know, uh, how many times have you seen like kids fish or pets have died, right? Oh, and the God, parents yeah. just replace them or whatever and they don't tell them, yeah. you know, because then it will be like, they died. I had to flush yeah. them down the toilet, you know, kind of situations, you know? I Yeah, I think lying definitely is, is there. there is a time and place for certain lies, but... Uh, the lies that keep us safe are the ones worth telling. I I really wish I could come up with a good, uh, anal- or a good example or c- scenario that it wouldn't be good to lie in order to keep someone safe. Safe, I think, is also that can be subjective in the sense of like emotionally safe, right? You know, like mentally safe or something like that, where right. you know, it, you know, just you know that I don't know. Someone cheated on someone, right? And you're like, it's not my place to say, you know, that this happened. You know, you can't alert the other person in the in the relationship to let them know that someone cheated because you're like, I, uh, you know, what do I do? Do right. I keep my friendship safe? Do I keep the relationship safe? You know, what's what what's the what's you know, 
what's the deal? What are, let's get, let's get real wild. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a couple, they have a child, you know, that child Ooh. is, is not, is not, uh, Ooh. is not is the, it, the, the man yours. Now, what if, what if, I don't know, like that sort of stuff. It's like, do you <laughs> right. say something, you know, because Ooh. like, you know, <clears throat> that's a, that's a good one. That's a nice potato salad right there. Um, you know, that's uh, those sort of situations. So I don't yeah. know. We don't, we don't have to find answers to this. No, you know, it's whatever. just, it's an interesting thought. Like, like when, uh, is there a, yeah, when does the point of lying, when does, when does the cost benefit in, uh, ratio like flip over, right? Right. Yeah. Because you, you look at the greater good, it's like by keeping this lie, I'm keeping X amount of people safe. Right. Like I'm protecting people, like literally keeping them safe by not exposing a lie. Right. Or is it something like, am I keeping someone's emotional state safe? Right. By lying to them you well, know, it's about like, this. We've seen this in shows like The Walking Dead. Someone gets mm-hmm. bit, mm-hmm. and like an outsider gets bit, and then someone sees it and they're like, nope, we're all fine. We're all good here. And it's mm-hmm. to save that person from getting killed right then, mm-hmm. you know, they they lie and they bring them in and then that person turns and kills a whole bunch of people. And they're like, you yeah. knew? You fucking knew that they were bit? Yeah. That's not how. Get out of here. And they just kick You it beat it, buddy. You, you get. You go get, other You group. go on and get. Get. Go on, get. Go on, get now. Let us know. Do you think lying to keep someone safe is worth it? Is it a blanket? Is it blanket worth it? Or are there exceptions to the rule? Let us know what the exceptions are. You tell us. You tell us. Also tell us, have you been watching the Olympics? Because I've been watching the shit out of those Olympics. I have too. And I feel like France lied to some of the athletes. (laughs) And it wasn't to keep them safe. It was to keep their egos safe. It was to keep... (laughs) Because there's been some really cool moments. This is not one of them. If you're looking for like, yeah, yeah, Doug, I know Simone Biles. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Frederick uh, Niles or Lyles. What was his name? The guy that won the 100 meter dash. Like, wow, that was such a cool moment. Like, yeah, yeah, cool. That was a great race, by the way. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We're talking about the Poop River, (laughs) the sign, and how fucking triathletes have not wanted to swim in it because the, the, the water levels have been super toxic from poop. Right. So if you guys don't know, uh, yeah, the Seine in, the, in, in France has uh, sewage dumped into it, and uh, it is an absolute cess- literal cesspool. Uh, it's a shit show. It is a shit show, shit river. It is uh, shit's creek is what it is. They've spent, I guess, over $1.5 billion trying to clean it up and get it regulated and this and that. And I guess, so I can't remember who I was talking to or, or listening to, but they said they had built some... They had built like a bunch of Olympic size swimming pool containment like units along there that all of the waste was going into to be held back. And then once the Olympics were done, basically they were just going to open it and be like, cool, back to business as usual. Like, but I think because it rained or something, it overflowed (laughs) and it like, it was just like one thing after the other. And the, and the mayor was like, I'll swim in it. And I don't think that ever, it was, it's just, but it has been fucking comical. Did you hear about the social media movement that was happening? Yes. Like there was political unrest with people. They were so pissed about the government. They were like on this day. So much money to clean this up. And the people are like, you're spending how much money for this fucking vanity project when you could just have them swim somewhere the fuck else. And and so what they did was they're like, hey, the mayor said he's going to swim in this pool. He's going to swim in this in this in this river a, on the day. Yeah. And and they're like, here's what we're saying. Like three days before they're scheduled to do that, everyone go poop in the river. Yeah, it was called so they were, sh- shit in the sand. Like <laughs> yeah. And so they was like spreading like wildfire, like everyone go out, take a dump in the river because there's no way they'll be able to clean up and they'll have to swim in the shit. Right. Just. Everyone go to the river, hang ass over the railing. <laughs> and just if that's not French, I don't know what is, man. I, like that, dude, their their levels of resistance are legendary. <laughs> look, yes, look, the French, French. You can say what you want about the French, but man, do they know how to resist? <laughs> they know how to resist. They're not absolutely. fucking around when absolutely. it comes to that absolutely. stuff. So they're supposed to do the triathlon. Triathlon, you know, three events requires people to swim, and part of it was swimming in the river. And they were going to swim, and they're like, they tested the water. They're like, we can't do this today. This is right. this is not good. This is not, hold, too, hold. Too much poop. It's, too much poop. Too much it bacteria. Is too le poopy. <laughs> it is le poopy. <laughs> um, and so they eventually, like the next day, they're like, all right, we can do this. And I remember reading a headline from quote from someone. They're like, what was it like swimming in the centrist part of the 
It's part of the triathlon. They're like, it didn't taste good. <laughs> oh, God. It's- because it's inevitably, oh. while you're swimming, you're swimming, you're breathing. Water's going to get oh, in your it's mouth. It's going to happen. Your mouth for sure, it's, yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. So just the, the thought of like you, in the, when the water was brown, like oh. it was no good. It was no it was it wasn't clear. It wasn't Bermuda. Can you imagine just oh. just the crystal clear? Can you imagine standing on that platform waiting to jump off into it, and you can just smell it? You're like, oh, dude, yeah, no. it doesn't. No. You know, it smells. It's like it's like this is just safe enough for you to swim in. That's like, right. You know that's how the like, level they got it to. Yeah, you know, there's like those minimal acceptable levels. Right. They're like <laughs> technically you can swim in this. Will you do it, Mr. Scientist? Absolutely not. Like, I- nope. I well, I'm not it. much of a swimmer. You're like, ah, I'm not an athlete. I'm just a scientist. <laughs> and yeah. um, so apparently, well, first, there's a couple of stories with this, which I think are hilarious. Um, one, in preparation for this, uh, <laughs> of course, it's an American. Yep. <laughs> a U.S. triathlete named Seth Ryder, who said he was preparing to swim in the dirty river. And he was trying to do this by exposing himself to E. coli levels so he could sort of quote unquote build up an immunity and he did this by not washing his hands after he went to the bathroom it's micro he was trying to micro dose E. coli and he said this is based on science this is what he said it's, it's, it's backed by science and uh, my favorite part of this little story which by the way thank you for sharing this did not know this was happening and also oh, yeah, baby. Seth great job on finishing 29th um, I feel like <laughs> Um, when, when he was like saying, yeah, this is totally backed from by science. And there's a scientist that's like, this is not how this works with right. E. coli, like at all. Chris Eads, he's an infectious disease consultant in Manchester. And he goes, his quote is, you can't Im- immunize yourself to E. coli by exposing yourself to it. It doesn't work like that. Just hard yeah. stop. <laughs> This is also just a problem with just social media in general, right? right? Like this. Well, you know, so remember, cause... everyone was sunning the perineum. Remember a oh, few yes. years ago? Oh yeah, and, uh, it was around COVID time, and they were like, "Yo, you got to get outside, and you got to put your taint towards the sun, and get that vitamin D." And doctors are like, "Please don't do this. This is yeah. you're 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 going to burn yourself. You're going to get melanoma. Like this is not that area is not meant to see sunlight. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Stop. Think it. of where it is on your body. Do you right. think it's designed to get a lot of sun? <laughs> don't do this. Don't do this. Please don't do this." Yeah, and it's just, you know, because he, he, oh, he says, he goes, it's proven method backed by science. I was like, you just can't say that. Where's the science, buddy? Right. Where's the science that says you can just, you know, <laughs> microdose E. coli so you can build up resistance to it so you can swim in a poopy river? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? He says it so nonchalantly. It's just little things throughout your day, like not washing your hands after you go to the bathroom, stuff like that. Oh, it's like. I love this other article. It's like, yeah, if you were to see him and you were to shake his hand to wish him good luck, just ask him if he washed his hands first because he right. thinks that. Uh, <laughs> I'm honestly like, can you imagine just being like, you know, in preparation? You're like, what what sort of preparation are you doing for the triathlon? He's like, oh, you know, I'm working hard. I'm getting, yeah. getting the bikes. I'm doing the runs, doing the swims, and I'm also, you know, I know that swim is going to be tough. You know, I got to build up my resistance to the to, to that to that river. I'm like, right. oh, how how are you doing that? He's like, you know, you taking vitamin C, probiotics. He's like, no, 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 just. Not washing my hands. You just, I just imagine people just kind of like scooting away <laughs> from him as now, he says that, you know. Like. Now, they did report that after Elvis went viral, uh, he shared the swimmer writer shared a video showing him washing his hands, giving a thumbs up and basically indicating like, hey, this wasn't this was a joke. I was just totally joking about all of this. But <laughs> I was jo- I was a jo- I was a joke. It was a joke. But again, Dr. Eads says, you know, look, you got a platform. You, you're prominent. You say things like this, it's gonna stick. So if you're if you're gonna you're not a comedian, you're not known for like being funny. Like if Pat Oswald said this, you might be like, that's funny. He's he's doing his thing. If Norm McDonald said this, you'd be like, amazing bit. This guy, I I don't know if you're you might I don't know, man. You might just be saving face now. I don't I don't know about this. To quote Mike Berbiglia, a very funny comedian. Uh, no more jokes. Uh, <laughs> he does an amazing bit where people just say bad, horrible things and they just realize they get a bad reaction. They go, I'm joking. Like some, sometimes someone walked in the office and was like, nice tits, Betsy. And everyone looked horrified. And he's like, I'm joking. And then someone goes, ah, uh, no more jokes because yeah. you're bad at them. And the way that people latch on to shit like this, literally, like 
they, they, they'll take that and they'll be like, oh, I don't have to wash my hands. It'll protect me from E. coli. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? I, no, and, I'm building up an immunity to it. Don't worry about it. And uh, in line with that, the Belgian triathlon team drops out after athletes fall sick after right. swimming in the fucking water, which is just God. Can you imagine that? I'm competing in the Olympics, baby. And you swim in the fucking water and then you get so fucking sick, you, you have to drop out. Well, this is That's the thing that, awful. that, like joking aside, breaks my heart because people train their whole life. Some people get one shot at this. You know, this is this is something that is so important to, to, to people who are comp- competing. And then because again, because of the ego of whoever was putting this on, they're like, no, 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 we can get it, we can get it good, we can get it. And and you don't. Like you don't you don't get it good. You don't make it okay. And then someone has to drop out because not only are they dropping out, but also this person's sick. Like if yeah. they truly if they do get E. coli, like that it could it could make you very, very sick. This isn't good, you know? It's not it's safe just, conditions to compete. It's not, it's not cool. You it's know? really not. And it's also again, like I said, heartbreaking because this person fucking trained so fucking hard for this. Yeah, this happens once every four years, gang. Like, right. this, you know, even if it was every year, it would suck to just, you know, rob someone of that. You know, it'd be like, hey, uh, we got this gymnastics stuff all set up. It's good to go. Um, we don't have the mats, though. We just have the spike pit <laughs> under it's, the uneven bars. But so you're good, though. You don't like you're a pro. But so we you put little little fall. cushion tips on the top of them. So you should be fine if you fall. You know, those felt pads that go under furniture. We just yeah. put a whole bunch of those on the tips. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, like when you buy a pen luck. and you're trying to write, and you're like, oh, shit, there's a little thing stuck on the top. I got to take that off. Like, that's exactly what it was, you know, on all of it. <laughs> you remember Sticky Tack? Yeah. Sticky Tack. Oh, Sticky the best tech. stuff. It's so Absolutely. great. Yeah, it's totally yeah. fine. It's just like, oh, my God. I, the other thing that I could, I can't, I can't wrap my head around is that for surfing, they send them to fucking, was it Tahiti? <laughs> Yeah. Also, here's I'm the just thing. Saying, there's, there's no other bodies of water that this could have happened in. Here's the thing. Is Tahiti a colony of France or I don't, is, is it, it related in that sort of – because I also – like I don't know when they said the Tahiti. Well, I mean, it was like – It's an island off of uh, French Polynesian. French yeah. Polynesia. I don't know. Yeah. So, so something else, I'm like, that's not a good look for like, you know – here, go to one of our colonies and, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's, I didn't even consider that. But I'm like, I don't know, yeah. man. Uh, yeah, but, 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 but. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah we're going to surf mean, in fucking France, man. We're, <laughs> we're going to surf. I mean, I don't right know, off the of- English Channel, you can catch some nice waves, you know, <laughs> like. South of France? I don't know. You know, I, I don't fucking know. Again, I'm not a gonna, fucking surfer. If you're gonna send someone, uh, if you're gonna send, if you're gonna like send a group like that off to do it somewhere else, why did it have to be in the Seine? Why did it have to be in this fucking? River? I know. Listen, from for a historical standpoint, it's like yes, this is a famous river. You should do the triathlon in there because it connects to the main part of. Paris and then you can get out and you can run, you can bike through whatever the main sections. And it's, it's a huge, yes, on paper that makes fucking sense. All right. But it's filled with shit. So can I offer a, an alternative suggestion? Let's Just go. Just have them do laps in the Olympic pool. <laughs> you know, that's clean. That's occupied, Justin. That doesn't oh. work with the schedule. Oh no. Did I not check the, the did I not check the whiteboard calendar that someone yeah. signed hey, up? Here's time. what I say. Fucking on the shores of Normandy. You know, for multiple reasons. Let's you know, do it. Yeah. Fucking swim off the shores of Normandy. <laughs> and then you just run all the way back to Paris. It's a, it's a triathlon, right? Come on. You run most of the way and then you bike the you rest. Bike you know? the rest of the way. God, we got it. We fucking got it. Yeah. It's, yeah, that uh, sucks. It's a it's a bummer. I feel I feel bad for that individual. I hope I hope the rest of it goes like like you said, there's been some really fucking cool really yeah. cool moments and, and stuff that's happened, but it has not been without its, uh, its controversy and a few, a few, what Oh moments. Speaking of one more, what Oh moment. Yeah. Uh, Leon Marchand, French, the man who simultaneously lost and won at the Olympics. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with this guy, he's a pole vaulter. If you're not familiar with pole vault, it's where you take a long malleable, uh, stick is, is, uh, is it's a pole along a spear kind it's of a bendy pole. And you run really fast, you stick it into a little pit, and you bend, and you shoot yourself up over a bar to see if you can clear it. And unfortunately, this man uh, went to go clear a height, and on the way down, uh, his his giant dick hit the, hit the bar and knocked 
knocked it off. Um, I, I, think I will say after Anthony watching the video, Amarietti is is who it was. Oh, was yeah. Oh, aside, sorry, yeah. Leon Michaud, Michaud, that guy's a great swimmer. That's, he's, that's, yeah, he's the swimmer. Yeah. yeah. My bad, my bad, y'all. <laughs> I was like, that name sounds really too familiar. <laughs> Anthony Amarati. Uh, Amarati. Yes, I'm sorry. My apologies for getting the name wrong. Um, I watched the video of this, and you can find it if you look it up. Uh, Anthony Amarati. Uh, here's the thing. That that vault, he wouldn't have cleared it because he already hit the bar with his knees. Like, there's no way he was clearing that because he goes up, he comes down, he already hit it with his knees. The deciding factor was his dick hitting it and, and like, basically knocking just, the bar. Yeah. Adding a period to that sentence, like it was just, or an exclamation point, yeah, <laughs> or a sad comma, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> depends but on the, yeah. The best part was like watching the video, and the announcers just don't know what to say as they watch right. it, oh. and it's just like because I mean it's clear that you see his dick hit it, and then it shimmies on the way down. His dick does, right? And it's yeah. Like, oh, well, and that's man. the thing: the knees didn't knock the bar down; his pulled it. Like, <laughs> yeah. His knees hit it to the point where I'm like, there's no way that bar's staying on there. But then his dick was like, let's make sure we, we – let's make this definitive. Let's finish Wha-bam. the job. Yeah. Yeah, let's finish the job. I uh, – look, again, I would say, like, if you're going to get disqualified, what a way to go. Honestly, that's going to be really embarrassing. The, the Olympic you know Village I mean? will be ablaze that night. Listen, you'll you'll be okay in the Olympic Village, all right? Yeah. It'll happen. And uh, that's just unfortunate, man, because, you know yeah. – that's just I can jokes imagine aside, that. again. This is one of those where I'm like, it's it's heartbreaking for the kid. Like I really, Ugh. you know, it. There, the, the obvious Here's the thing. spring to mind. He's never gonna is, live that down either. No, like, and that's the that is the bad thing. Like, yeah, he's just he's gonna remember this when, even in the future if he makes it back to the Olympics. Of like, and here is Anthony Amarati back again. He's on his redemption tour. <laughs> <laughs> Seems as though uh, he t- decided to use his own pole for this uh, pass. He's been really focused on uh, flaccid. This flaccid performance, just, you know, trying to really just. <laughs> well, I want to see, has he released a statement or anything yet? Like, because I'd be curious no to see if he's, ha- does he, is he taking it in stride or is he, is it one of those where he is? Because I, I, I don't know. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm sorry. I just I didn't really I didn't look up some of the newer news about him. TMZ uh-huh. is reporting that he has been offered a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar offer from a por- uh, a a well known porn site. Of course, of course they are. Of course they're like, let's get this guy in here. Let's 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 capitalize on this moment. Jesus. Oh, here we go. French pole vaulter breaks silence. I just kind of curious if what the statement was. Uh it's a big disappointment. I'm a bit gutted because I didn't miss anything on the third attempt at uh, 5.7 meters. What I did miss was a bit of jumping in training to fine tune the settings. I was 100% physically, but I was missing a bit of the. Was it? I was 100% physically, but I was missing a bit of pole vault. The conditions were good. I think there might have been some lost in translation. The first time I've started a competition without any stress, as I was a total outsider, only had one goal: uh, play with the public. I was almost there. Uh, bah, 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 bah. he did not directly address the online frenzy surrounding his unfortunate gaffe. So yeah. he basically just said, you know, here's what, like probably more addressing the knees. Like I wasn't, yeah. you know, physically I was there mentally. I didn't prep myself the right way or whatever. I hit it. I was so close. Um, I guess he yeah. was also like in contention to win a medal too. So that just makes it even worse. It does. You know? Yeah, it does. Like, that sucks, man. That's again, sucks. joking aside, you feel bad for these people who work so hard yeah. for it. It's just unfortunate that the thing that disqualified him also objectively is kind of funny. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah. Uh, one of the favorite uh, uh, tweet was, uh, when you're about to win an Olympic medal, but your massive dick gets in the way while the world watches in slow motion. <laughs> and I think that was the other like hard part is just like they're playing over and over in slow motion. And, you, like, and they're like, let's see, how did he, how did, what happened here? And right. we're like... Uh, can you imagine a producer being like, "Okay, no more, no more slip ups." Well, that's the thing. No. Like, how does NBC, who's who's hosting the uh, the yeah the, right the airings of this? Oh, <laughs> they, God, they're broadcasting this. What do you do? What is the standards and practices going to say? I think we can show it. Question mark. I mean, technically, it's a reason why he's not getting a medal. Yeah, I think we have to be able to talk about it. Ugh, I don't. Know. I got it. What, awesome. what I really want to see is I need to go back and watch the Today Show and see if the anchors how they handled it. Yeah, yeah. I, I always well, love. I always love anytime people in that in those positions get put into that like 
because you can tell some of them are really just they're dying to make the jokes, but their producers yeah. are in their ear going, "Do not fucking do it." <laughs> Yeah, right. Do not do yeah. it. Some of the best moments come from those those things where uh, <laughs> well, there was some news clip where there was like a white guy that was like trying some chicken or something on the air. He's like, wow, this is so good. And the black guy goes, what's the matter? You never make it that, down to that part of the neighborhood or something like that? Like you never you never had tasty chicken before or something like just made this like, like called, comment. Just made it super uncomfortable. And everyone just lit up laughing because he was just like, what, you never had flavor before? Like you never like, you know. It's the best. It's the, the uh, best. Yeah, the local news compilations are usually uh, oh, are usually they're so fantastic. Good. They're so good. They're like nobody's watching this. Nobody cares. <laughs> WGN in Chicago is the king of that. Yeah. By the way, their newscasts are. It's a train that has fallen off the rails. <laughs> it's it is something else. Well, let us know. Would you swim in the Poop River? And and just leave a comment for Anthony. Be like, hey man, we love you. Right. Don't give up on your dreams. All right. We support you. Yeah. Don't let your dick get in the way of your dreams. All right. Yeah. If I didn't. We love you, buddy. For, yeah. It, <laughs> what's the, for what's the lie you would tell him to make him feel better? <laughs> oh, boy. I'd be like, <laughs> I guess the lie. I'd be like, I lied to you. I said it wasn't that big. You know? <laughs> hey, man. And now. I think everyone it's hurt saw. you. <laughs> and now you're not safe anymore. <laughs> you know how I said, like, you know, oh, I don't think anyone noticed. Everyone knows. <laughs> everyone knows. Everyone knows now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> ah, well, it's time again to test Justin's knowledge of movies, lines, and possibly sounds in a game we called. I don't know. I don't know what we're calling this. Uh, guess the movie by the sound and audio clip. Yes, yeah. Hey. So if you've been here the last couple of weeks, you know how this works. I'm going to play Justin either a line from a movie or a uh, sound effect. And he has to figure out what movie it's from. So, Justin, I got a few here for you. You ready? I'm so ready. So this all right. There's a couple becoming... of sound effects in this in this batch. So, oh, I hate those. Those are my least favorite. But I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. I'm here we go. Here's your first one. Your Obviously. haunted look tells me everything. Obviously, that is the ghost of Robin Williams. <laughs> it is the, the ghost of Robin Williams. In the Dead Poets Society. Yay! Nice! Well done, man. Ka-ka! Look, Carpe The look Diem, on your face made it seem like, Jesus Christ, I don't well, know what this is. At but. first, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to understand what this person's saying. But then I'm like, oh, wait, okay, I, yeah. It, it, it quickly came into focus. Well done. Right yeah. off the bat, he's doing well. <laughs> Dead Poets Society. Kind of a... Interesting moment in that film that I always like, and it's like very notable as he's creepily whispering to kids <laughs> as they stare at pictures of old people. You know, and yeah. the, the, immediately cuts to one of the students walking out, going, "Well, that was weird." <laughs> and like, yeah, it was. That movie is is one of those that I don't think gets enough. It, it's it's in the classics realm, like for me, yes. I don't think it gets enough uh, airplay. I never see mm-hmm. it. Like I always see. You know, Goodwill Hunting and mm-hmm. uh, Good Morning Vietnam. There's a you know, like Harry Met Sally. Things of that time era uh, always get replayed. I rarely see that one getting replayed in any of the any of the uh, the, the movie channels. So it's on I, my boarding school mix of movies. A, that I oh, go what's on, what else is on your boarding school mix of movies? School ties, taps. Oh, I feel like there's another one that I'm forgetting. Uh, those are oh, definitely. Taps. Three. I was. <laughs> I was thinking stripes with Bill Murray and I'm like, what? <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> All right. I have those stripes. I feel like there's another one I can't think of off the top of my head. Those are like, yeah, those are, those are good ones. Yeah. All right. All right. You ready for your next one? Your next yes, one, this is going to be, this is going to be a sound effect. Okay. So get ready. I was very low, but it was the wand drop that got me. It's a Harry, it's Harry Potter. Yeah, but which one? It is the uh, uh, I'm gonna say Deathly Hallows Part Two. Nope. God damn it! Do it again. All right, here we go. <laughs> Fuck. I'm so it could come. be where he has to face Draco Malfoy in the in the giant hall and Snape kind of protects him it's not that one it's, it's not guess. that one okay because I can't tell if it's a kid or if it's a uh, adult that's 
This is a super important scene. And I like it specifically because oh. it's, it's devoid of all music. Is this the one that uh, where um, uh, where Commissioner Gordon gets pushed through the portal? <laughs> it's where Sirius Black yeah. is. Uh, it's right before he right. gets killed. He's dueling with uh, Draco's father. Yes. And he's just like yes. whipping yes, yes, around. Yes, yes, yes. And that, that, him, that scream is like him popping his, his wand. And then he goes, ah! as he drops his wand. Into the void. Cool. Yeah. 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 Well okay. done. Excellent work. Excellent work. All right. Bingo bongo. Here, come, here comes your next sound effect. Here we go. It goes on for so long. I know, it does like 12 it seconds. It goes on for so long. And then it's got a perfect comedically timed, just like, wind down. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, man. Fuck. I'll say this about the Harry Potter one. Uh, <laughs> the It's a mark of a, a, a an amazing sound design team when you can get, it's that recognizable that quickly. Like that is, that yeah. is just the mark of a really good sound design team. I was wondering if you'd be able to get that really quick because if – Kind of out of context, you're like, it just sounds like a bunch of, bah, boo, boo, bah, 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 you know, but like, yeah, you yeah. can kind of figure out what's happening, you know. Um, but back to this one. All right. So it's got, it's, it's, it has to happen like in space or something. It's got uh, that, that seems uh, either lasery or teleporty of some mm-hmm. kind. Um, I want to say, and this is not it, but for, I want to say it so I can get it out of my head. Mm-hmm. 2001 A Space Odyssey. No. I'm gonna, right, cool. I'm going to get that out of there so I don't, my brain. So now can, your brain can finally file it away. Your that, brain's yeah. like 2001 Space Odyssey. That's it. But yeah. it's 2001 Space Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not that, but I have to say it so it, mm-hmm. I don't say it. Um, give it to me again. Give it to me again. All right, here we go. One's a little get ready for 12 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> This is one of those that the the nerds in the comments are gonna come at me hard, like they did with the Matrix when I get <laughs> those those the trolling on that was just fucking. I want to thank all of you who commented because that was I I loved it. I'm like I deserve it. This is beautiful. Also, if you were in the hot seat, fuck you, you wouldn't have got it. So uh, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying it's not easy. Um, man, this is one that I'm gonna I'm either gonna kick myself or I'm gonna get dragged again. <clears throat> Fuck, man. I oh man. Um. I if, okay. I, I'm gonna need a clue. Can you give me a year? Ah, a year. Here or s- some other random factoid. Uh, came out in 1984. I mean, is it? <laughs> it's not. Well, you asked for the year. Don't be no, like, no. I know, but I'm like, it's not Return of. The, it's not. Uh, it's not Star Wars, is it? Mm-mm. Okay, good. I was like, if, I, if it's a Star Wars one, I'm just gonna feel like shit. Then um, came out in eighty four. Eighty four. Was it Tron? Nope. Fuck. Good guess, but no. Fuck, man. Ah. Uh, um. Is it is it Zardoz? It's not Zardoz. The one with Sean Connery and the it's got the red one of the most bikini. memorable casts of all time. It's a pop culture phenomenon. Fuck. <laughs> That's not helping. Does that help? Does that help? No, it makes me Does feel help? worse. God damn no. it. Um, one of the fuck man, pop culture, huge cast. Man, my mind is so blank right now. I gotta tap. I gotta tap out. All right, that is the proton pack from the Ghostbusters. Oh, what? Yeah. Is it really? It is. Play it again. Fuck. And the end is when it powers down after they're done. 
at what what scene was it that was that quality that clear? Because usually there's like there's stuff blowing up or there's like I think it's an isolated it's isolated. All right, see, all right. That's I was thinking that that was oh that's good. I was but usually, also you got to use the they, context they, to kind of you know they they also do that. I think that oh, that particular fuck. one, especially when it powers down, is when they fire at um, Zool. Oh, towards the, the end. end. Yeah. Because they shoot, because you hear him power it down. I mean, the powering down thing is what I really remember Fuck. from that. Oh, man. I'm it. so mad at myself right now. Again. It's all good, man. This is, no, no, good. This is one of those where, man, oh, the, the, the comments I are just recently come... watched the newest Ghostbusters, so this I was did too. one of the why it popped in my head, you know. <laughs> because of your recommendation. I almost I did. did the powering up one. I wonder if you would have gotten it if I had done the power up sound. I feel like I might have had a better, maybe. Yeah. Actually, I do think I would have figured that one out. See, but I thought I this one might be better, Yeah, but I don't know. It what I thought matter. about doing was playing one. If you didn't get it, play the other and see if you could piece it together. But Ooh, fuck you. that would have been good. Yeah, fuck me. Uh, <laughs> all right, right I got know, one I'm gonna more. Say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to lean into it now. Okay. Comment me comments. Give me your best <laughs> shot. Give me your best. All right, I got one more for you. All right. This one is one of my favorites of all time. Here we go. Nice fucking model. <laughs> <laughs> what a great, what a great isolated bit. I love it. One of my favorite lines in a movie. Uh, give it to me again. I just for the sheer entertainment value. Nice fucking model. Is it Beetlejuice? It is Beetlejuice. <laughs> oh man. The first place my mind went was Who Friend Roger Rabbit. <laughs> I was like, it's kind of like that, that honk was, I'm like, that's cartoony. Yeah. But then is. Michael Keaton's voice, I'm like, that's not anyone in yeah, like like his voice is so iconic. So yeah. That's well done. That's that's so great because uh Nally saw like a sneak peek of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Sure. And I was like, what do you think, Nally? You want to see it? She goes, I don't know, it looks kind of scary. I'm like, we can watch the first one. I was like, it does have an F bomb in it, even though it's a PG movie. Oh yeah, yeah. It didn't play <laughs> it's like that any part. Back there. Yeah. I love that because he's like, nice fucking model. And as he grabs his junk, he goes, honk, honk. Right. I'm like and I didn't even realize that when I was a kid. Like yeah. that, that totally passed over. Just, As an adult, yeah. I rewatched it and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Did you guys end up watching it together? Not yet. We okay. haven't watched it yet. Because I wondered if it'd scare. Because well, that's the thing. Like, of... did you did you vet it for is there anything else in there? Because it gets I re, I remember specifically the the scene where where Baldwin and um uh no, it's not Gina Gershon. Um Gina Davis. Gina Davis, uh, where they do the thing where they have to like Mess their like she's like well let me see your scary oh, face right. and he does right. he pokes his eyes and he pulls his beak right. out and that I remember as a kid I'm like that scene I'm like holy shit like that's there's that some intense. dark shit in there yes. like you know like if you like listen to what it is it's like oh yeah this is the hall of places where people who committed suicide <laughs> they right. in purgatory you're like what <laughs> I'm saying dude like it's yeah so yeah, I I'd be curious dark. to see if Nat could could handle that that's an intense yeah movie. I don't know and plus like the sandworms and stuff like that yeah. or even Beetlejuice like his you know his head you know his body becomes like a snake and things like that I mean, that's you know, again that, some, yeah intense shit spooky, spooky stuff but yeah um, well done justin you dude, did very those well were, again another wonderful selection curated by you thank you very much i'm a never gonna i'm never gonna my forgive head. myself for that fucking <laughs> ghostbusters what i'm so angry about that well you gave it a solid try and yeah. that's all that matters all right justin what do you got to recommend this week buddy look a second week in a row i'm just gonna say uh, deadpool wolverine Go, I'm just going to go ahead and hop in now, and I'm going to second that because I finally got to see it. It's a great fucking movie. Go see you the film. See it. It, it is yeah. such, it is so much fun. And now we haven't gotten a chance. You and I have not gotten a chance to talk about it and break it down. But I sent you uh, a uh, a reel where like it was people's reaction to, and and I think Ryan Reynolds posted. It was like that scene or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now you know, I think you know which scene that scene is. We haven't got it, mm-hmm. but the cameos in this mind-bending how he got top some notch. of these people yeah top notch so go see yeah, unfortunately two of the cameos unfortunately got ruined for me oh uh, did they before oh. inadvertently we're gonna have the we're gonna have the d yeah. uh yeah we're gonna have to talk about this after yeah but uh it's a fantastic movie you should all go check if you like deadpool it's for you if you don't yeah. like deadpool don't go see it so yeah. that's all i gotta say about that but yeah it's a fantastic fucking movie it's raking in the money and it deserves every every dollar that it gets so absolutely couldn't agree more Hoorah. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. As always, check us out at youtube.com slash podcast. Please like, please subscribe, leave comments. Let us know what you think about all this shit. We love to hear from you. Let YouTube know that, you know, you like this and you want to see more of it. 
Check the link in the description for links to our Discord, to links to our Patreon, to links to our merch at Redbubble. And be sure to follow us on all our social media at MindGap podcast and be sure to follow justin as well on instagram at justin underscore michael spelled m-i-k-e-l it's the fun way of spelling it while you're in the online realm if you listen to podcasts instead of watching podcasts you can find us anywhere where you listen to podcasts go ahead and subscribe share rate review all those things that we always ask you to do the big one is sharing please let people know that we exist we're out here we're trying to make you laugh hopefully we succeed uh let people know let people know you found a funny one and you like these guys, and you think they will too. And then twoestateth.com, twoestateth on all social media, and loveandimprovfilm.com, loveandimprovfilm on Instagram. Yeah. yeah! With that, I'll say thank you, Justin. Thank you, brother. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, viewers and watchers and everyone else. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Bye.